it came back. All right, there's my filter. I'm going to add in. Strange enough, this is actually a recently rebuilt box. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, I'm looking <laughs> for. Could it be under fast IO? Near the top. I saw stuff about reads and writes. Right. You see, yeah, right. Fast IO, right. Fast IO, right. But I don't think it was that, because I wrote it down the one I actually found it under was right. Is it under operation or is it under something else? I'm locked. Huh. I'm pretty sure it was underneath operation. Well, let's just go ahead and reset it all. Alright. And see, I see a whole bunch of stuff going on right here. Some user update data roaming. I'm going ahead and... Uh, Tell it not to look at registry stuff either. Don't look at network stuff. Don't look at process stuff. Just show me file system stuff. You see what's actually running the exe at some point? Oh, actually, and I want to show it only this process. By the way, I can right click on a process and say include. May I have your attention, please? The time is now 4.30, and at this time, all computer labs are closed. The user service include the just the PID and uh, start looking through this. Oh, actually, that looks promising, doesn't it? And you might be right. Maybe it is. I seem to recall when I was doing this inside of my VM before I was using write file. That's what I was looking for. But it looks like I, did, I wrote down the wrong one. Maybe it is fast IO write. Because you see that text file right there? It wrote something into it. And I can actually jump straight to it. And if I recall right, yeah, it opens up the directory, and I can actually look at the file, and there's my username and password. This, like I said, these are incredibly simplified versions of it, not real world, but it gives you enough of an idea of how to use the application to use it on a real world one, as opposed to sitting there searching through... Well, you saw how much of a pain in the butt it was to search through all those records for just that simple application. All right. Let's move on. Um, if you don't know how something is hashed, you can do... Uh, a quick uh, copy of the hash and do a Google search for it and see if someone's already cracked that particular hash. I've had good luck with that. Now, granted, you're kind of leaking information about you know the password you're working on to Google, which could be bad. You can also like a look at the source code if it's available. And if you're good with a debugger like Ollie Debug, you might be able to sit there, uh, look at the stack, and figure out exactly how it's hashing it. I can't do that, but someone else here might be able to do that. Uh, other weird vectors for finding passwords on a box, and I think I'm more cover these, we're very close to the end. Inverse brute force, what I already talked about. I, you know, set, George called them seven uh, words you can't say on TV. You use those seven words, like, well, let's say, fuck. You use that, and you always know a bunch of usernames. And there's tools out there for basically extracting usernames from a domain name. Basically, it searches the websites and pulls out all the possible email address it finds. The first part, that's probably a username. You take all those usernames and then use those as uh, the things that change and use the same password for all of them. Someone out there probably has a four-letter word if you don't have decent password restriction policies. Uh, also, it's less likely to trip lockout from the standpoint is you're not trying multiple passwords on one account. You're trying one password on multiple accounts. Uh, a word about automation. There's tons of ways you can uh, make a, a U-free thumb drive. There's always pre-made payloads where you just pop in the thumb drive and have it auto-run. Now, a lot of modern systems have auto-run turned off, which is why you can use something like the uh, programmable HID devices I've been talking about on the website recently to automate it in a different way. But those automated ways of basically dumping all these passwords so you can just plug a thumb drive in, wait a few seconds, pull it back out, then go do your cracking or your looking at the passwords later. And... Uh, Hack5 has a great wiki on that, and I have a video on making one of these u free thumb drives, but it's for instant response. This guy, instead of cracking passwords, what he does is you plug this thing in, it dumps a ton of information about the system that might be of interest later on to find out how it's compromised, and then you can take it down so it doesn't continue to compromise other boxes on your network. And that's a little tool Russell uh, Butterini came up with. 
Another interesting place to find passwords I've found uh, is in the logs. How many people have accidentally typed their username and password and they screwed it up and they typed their username and their password in the username field? Yeah, uh, yeah. So if you start looking for bad logins and then a successful login right afterwards, sometimes you can go out there and find passwords that got stored in the log files. And I actually have a tool called a PibCAC attack. PibCAC stands for Problem Exists Between Keyboard and Chair. It only works in XP for the time being. I think Windows 2000. I need to update it to work in Windows Vista, Windows Vista in 7. But if you want to manually go through there, you can try looking for times when people uh, had failed logins and see if the reason they had a failed login is because they typed the wrong thing into the wrong field. All right. Wrapping things up, a few events I want to let you all know about. ShoeCon is coming up on September 18th down in Atlanta, Georgia. Probably far for most of y'all, but it's being held for the same charity that this class was held for. The Louisville InfoSec is coming up in October 7th. Uh, hope you all can make it. DerbyCon 2011 is uh, coming up in, of course, 2011, September. So it's more than a year away, but it should be a decent-sized con. We're going for something more ShmooCon, DefCon-esque than uh, some other conferences. Is it yes. Oh, Currently, the current organizers are uh, Martin, myself, and Dave Kennedy. Oh, cool. Um, and so, of course, all of us will be speaking there. And we got some other big names, which I can't talk about quite yet. Um, also, Freaknik, Nauticon, and Autozone are all ones I recommend going to, and SkyDogCon, whenever he actually figures out a date for it. Finally, questions. Sorry that last part was so rushed, but I know we're about to get kicked out. I just want to let you know that we're close to five. You all can go out of here by about quarter still. We really appreciate it. No problem. I just finished up. And as I'm shutting down the machine, uh, anybody want to ask any questions? Uh,